Uh, do me a favor, please. Uh, turn to your neighbor, folks, graduates and folks in the stands. Turn to the person to your left and say, it's time to go to work. Now turn to the person on your right and say, it's time to go to work. Now what you have just repeated to them is the name of my commencement speech. So just in case y'all leave here and can't remember nothing I said, at least you remember the title of what I'm talking about. It's time to go to work. 50 years ago, Dr. King gave this amazing speech on April 3rd, 1968 at Mason Temple in Memphis. Many of us know it as the mountaintop speech, but the problem for a lot of us, we've only heard the bottom two thirds, the bottom two minutes and 30 seconds of that speech, as opposed to the entire 43 minute and 16 second speech. And he opens that speech talking about uh, how he could have been born in any period in world history, yet he was appreciative that God placed him in that period in which he was born uh, to be a part of the great black freedom movement, some call the civil rights movement. And it's amazing to me when we look at what's happening today in our country, and there are folks who are say we have never seen anything like this before. There are folks who are saying they can't believe that Donald Trump is president. There are folks who are saying uh, the craziness and the madness you see when you see a nation where cops are pulling a 60-year-old black grandmother out of her car, when you're seeing folks calling the cops on a student that's sleeping at Yale, when you're seeing two brothers can't even go get a cup of coffee at a Starbucks, people are saying, I can't believe the time that I am living in. There are folks who say, I, I really wish uh, we did not have to deal with any of this stuff. Why could we not have some other moment in time. But let me say this to every single person who is sitting on the floor. You are here at the precise time for a precise reason. See, a lot of us uh, really don't want to have to confront what is happening in our country because what we are saying is uh, it's just too much. I, I, I really wish I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. But see, I don't care if you are sitting in this class and you are black, white, Latino, Asian, Christian, uh, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, does not matter. The reality is somebody before you had to deal with a hell of a whole lot worse than what you have had to deal with. Oh, I know some of y'all look at me right now and you're saying, yeah, but you don't know my story and, and you don't know what I've had to endure just to even get to this point uh, to graduate. But let me be real clear. Uh, not every previous graduating class of Texas Southern graduated in air conditioning. See, not, not every other previous graduating class uh, was sitting in, uh, even though you might think those are not comfortable chairs, imagine if you were sitting in some wooden chairs uh, that were not the greatest in the world. Imagine uh, if you were uh, in a class and you were graduating outside in the heat right now, uh, you would not be saying, uh, man, I, I'm kind of glad where I am right now. See, it's amazing how we love to think that our situation is a lot more difficult than what somebody else endured. But see, the fact of the matter is there's somebody who is sitting in the stands today who would have loved to be wearing a cap and gown and walking across the stage, but they did not have the resources, did not have the time, did not have the opportunity. And so I think you need to understand that somebody put some time in, put some work in to allow you to even sit where you are sitting right now. So don't think it's all about you No, not a single one of you got here by yourself now see that's real hard for some of us who think that we do this thing all by ourselves but see that simply is not the case and see, I know uh, you're sitting here and you say, well, uh, but I put in all of this work already and I, I, I've done all of these things and, and, and I studied hard and, and I put in the time. But baby, let me let you understand that that's the end of one process. Now you're about to walk into another process. Because see, now is the point in your life when you are about to really begin to build a legacy, not just for you, but also 
for your family. See, the decisions that you make leaving here today won't just impact you, but they're also going to impact your children and your children's children. See, you may not even have any children in the future, but trust me, there are some nieces and nephews who are going to be impacted by your decision. I don't have any biological children, but I've raised six of my nieces, and trust me, the decisions that I made has had an impact on them because I've been able to give them a life they otherwise would not have. And so I want you to understand that leaving here is going to require you to put in the work. And that work is going to be a lot more difficult, a lot more tough, a lot more painful, a lot more aggravating, a lot more stressful than anything you have endured in the last four, five, six, seven, and probably somebody sitting here eight, nine, ten years. But see, it don't matter whether you finished in four or five or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten, at least you actually finished. Because see, there are a whole lot of people who you probably came here with who quit. Because they didn't want to put the work in that was necessary to reach this day. And that's really what commencement is. It really is about uh, the end of a process uh, where you are celebrating all of the hard work that you put yourself through to get to this very point. And when I say you got to put in the work, I want you to understand that the work is not just about how it's going to benefit your family. Because see, later in this ceremony, uh, your association president will step up here. And if I really need to go ahead and say this, let me make this perfectly clear. You are sitting in this room right now because some previous Texas Southern University graduates made sure to write a check to send back to the university to ensure that you have an opportunity and you as graduates in 2018 cannot leave this campus without having a recommitment to your university to ensure somebody a year, five or ten years has a TSU to go to. Oh, see, I, see, I don't think some of y'all heard me, so let me step behind this podium. What I'm saying is, when you leave TSU, I fully expect you to write a check back to TSU to ensure the next student that looks like you, who come from your neighborhood, your city, your state, your family, has a university to be able to go to. Okay, see, some of y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying, so let me, let me just walk on down here. Uh, I need the graduates sitting here to understand there's an expectation for every single one of y'all to give back to this very institution because that's how you have buildings and dorms and books because as a black student, a Latino student, an Asian student, a Muslim student who is saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to college and what you do will determine whether or not they are able to go to this university. And so I need you to decide today whether or not it's going to be about you or it's going to be about folks after to you, so I fully expect every single one of you to ensure that you send a check back to the school, not for homecoming, not for your class, but to ensure that this school is thriving and succeeding in the future because it's not just about you, it's about whether or not this school still exists. And that goes for some of you TSU graduates in the audience who have not sent a check back in a while. Trust me, they'll be happy to take your money via PayPal, credit card, or even cash. I'm laying out, it's time to go to work because there's a whole lot of work to do to make this nation a more perfect union. Dr. King would often say, that we are here to redeem the soul of America. See, there's, there are two different Americas. There's an America that's on paper, where every man and every woman is equal. But then there's an America that we see on television and that we see in newspapers and online that's different than the America that's on paper. Which means that 
every generation, it's their job to ensure that we live or we get to that type of America. That America where you not pull out of your car simply because of the color of your skin. That America where you're not following around in department store just because somebody think you look like somebody else. That America where you get a job based upon the merits of your resume, not based upon who you know or what school you went to. I'm talking about the America that ensures equal opportunities for every single body as opposed to having a fight for every single thing. That is the work I'm talking about. Because, see, if we are all in this thing just for ourselves, me, myself, and I, then America will never change. Because, see, I really need you to understand that in 25 years, the year 2043 will be the year that America will be a majority people of color. That means that folks who are black, who are Latino, who are Asian will comprise more than 50% of America, which means that in 25 years, you will be leading corporations, you will be leading universities, you will be running businesses, which means that you will be the leaders who will be determining the future of America. Which means that numerical numbers mean nothing unless we are in position to take advantage of that demographic power. So what that means is that everything you do between now and then means that you are properly positioning yourself for leadership for that moment in time. And I know somebody is saying, man, but I, I, I ain't trying to think about all of that. I mean, I'm just trying to enjoy this day. I'm just trying to wave at my family. I'm just trying to take a picture. But see, you never know how fast 25 years goes. You're going to look up and you're going to say, I thought I had time. And then all of a sudden, you don't have time. You also don't know how many years God has given you on this earth. So the question is, how are you able to accomplish what you are designed to do while you are here? See, so for some of us, we think that we have more time than we actually have. But when you come across the folks, and see, I had to deal with a, a young sister who we know out of uh, in D.C., Tara Jones, who was sitting in a meeting last week, actually sitting in a meeting this week in Baltimore, 44 years old, on the rise, Massive heart attack in the meeting. Her funeral is Tuesday. Now imagine she was thinking, because the day before she posted on her Facebook page that she was looking for somebody to cut her yard. That was on Tuesday. She was gone on Wednesday. And so when you begin to think about that, you begin to ask yourself, if I don't know the time, I know, don't know the day, that means that I need to do what's required every single day of my life and not waste a single second when it comes to living my dream, when it comes to trying to make a difference. See, that's why when I'm on television and newspaper, folks are like, man, you ain't playing around. I'm like, no, because see, I don't know if I'm coming back next week, so I plan to give as much hell as I can today. So if I'm not here next week, they're going to remember all the hell I gave them last week. See, that's what I mean by putting in the work. And so it doesn't matter what your job is, whether it's engineering or computer science or English, I need all of you to be thinking that I got to put in the work to be a difference maker. And the last point is this here, when I say put in the work. What it also means is that you are going to also have to lean on and depend on some of the very people sitting in this room. See, I know some of you are looking right now saying, I don't even know who that brother is or who that sister is, but you may very well be sitting next to uh, your future CEO. You might be sitting next to the person who could fund your campaign if you're running for office. You might be sitting next to the person who could be the venture capitalist for the company that you want to launch. And so what I need you to understand is that don't overlook the person sitting next to you based upon how they look today. Because they may look like somebody today who you don't want to talk to, but then tomorrow they might be a CEO, and then, then you'd be trying to catch up to them and say, hold up, but we were in the same class together. But, they, but you ignored them when they were there. I'm just saying you may want to holler at the person sitting next to you because that might be the person who could change your life down the line. Every single one of you has the capacity right now to change the country. 
The question is, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to be a change agent? Are you willing to take the time to say, I have no time for games because I'm trying to go somewhere? My suggestion to you is that when you leave this graduation ceremony and you have your party and y'all have all the fun, then you say, I appreciate everything, is, every, all the things that y'all did, all the gifts and all the music and all the food. But see, and now it's time for me to get to work. And then when you go to work and do what you're supposed to do, and then all of a sudden people begin to say, uh, well, how were you able to do it? How were you able to accomplish it? How were you able to be a distinguished graduate of Texas Southern University? It's because you didn't play games when you graduated. What you did was you focused on the task at hand and you said, I want to be somebody great. I want to be a change agent. So I suggest take your robe off, put your overalls on, put your hard hats on. It might be some work boots or some Louboutins. And I say it's time to get to work.